Okay, so we've been doing a lot of birds and flowers recently and someone suggested we should do a building, which so I thought it was time for a, a, a change. And I was browsing around and found this lovely picture. I think it's Banborough Castle in Northumberland. Um, and it has a lot of the qualities that I like in a photo. It has nice, strong lights and darks. It has a good composition, nice big shapes, and subtle colour, uh, a band across the middle, which is where the, all the interest is, uh, lovely muted grass tones down here, which is nice. So it seemed perfect to try and paint. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so let's get the pencil out and let's do a bit of drawing. We'll probably do a bit of colour matching later on. But let's do a bit of drawing now. Let's think about the composition. So the photo as it stands, it's got the castle slap bang in the middle. Uh, we could paint it like that. Um, I'm nothing against breaking the rules in that sense, but I think shifting it just slightly to the right, just to put it slightly off centre will be a good thing. We'll lose a bit of this, but that's fine. And then we'll have to extend the, the land out slightly there, but I think that is going to be okay. So let's have a go. Now, let's set our sort of basic horizon line. It's a bit tricky because we've got, it's on a slight hill, so let's put it, it's not in the middle, it's slightly below center. So it's gonna be, I'm just gonna mark in lightly where, where sort of this, this line is slightly below center. I'm using a mechanical pencil. I like a mechanical pencil for drawing for watercolour. Um, you always get a very, you get the same uh, width lead all the time. You don't have to sharpen it. You don't have to carry around bags full of graphite shavings, which always get out and make everything black. And it almost never runs out as well, which is great. So, let's move this here. It's coming down a little. Just little marks where this is going to be. And let's see where this vertical is going to go. Let's put him. It's going to end just above. Uh, should we make it bigger? Just a little more imposing. It's kind of it's kind of small in the landscape. Well, it's um. Just put in a vertical. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. It's the pollen. Oh dear, oh dear. Apologies for that. Mm. It's that time of year. There's pollen everywhere. And I'm not particularly sensitive to pollen, but anyway. Okay, I'm just lightly marking in this tower. And now I'm going to go across putting in the big shapes. So there's this tower and then there's the same width, slightly more, just to get this vertical in. Put this vertical in. And then that is probably about twice the width. Maybe a little more. That vertical in. A little bit of perspective down here, which I'm not going to do with vanishing points or anything. I'm just going to I'm going to eyeball that angle, which if you look at it, it's been kind of a a seven o'clock angle. Put some just indicate these little turrety bits. And I'm not putting hard, harsh lines. I'm not joining things up, I'm just indicating the main areas. Uh, and so this is a horizontal, this wall across here. These are lovely shadows here, it would be good fun to do. And there's this little pepper pot piece. Which I am going to mark in, because that's kind of, it's important for the structure itself. If you look at other photos of Bamber Castle, they always it's kind of a signature structure in this castle. And this comes actually comes almost up to the top there. 
comes down and across. I'm just drawing this dark piece here. As long as you get your verticals right and your horizontals right and the perspective is not crucial in this but you have to get the, the angles there or thereabouts the absolute proportions of the thing are quite forgiving I'll just leave that a bit for now okay and then this this is light here and it steps down And we may lose some of these lines because we're going to put a huge wash over the whole of this. That kind of comes out. I'm going to maybe uh, exaggerate this a little bit. It's a little separate piece here. And I'm not going to draw in things like windows or doors or anything like that. I'm going to put those in with a brush at the end. Okay, so we've got here, come up, here, lots of little twiddly bits with beautiful value contrasts. And I mustn't lose my weight on this. Comes down, down, steps down. It's not going to that piece that goes up. And there's a big shadow there. Okay, this comes down, swoops up. Okay, nice. And so we've done this front bit, let's just put in this back piece. And up and across. And I'm putting, I'm drawing this in, but I'm kind of keeping half an eye on the relationships. I'm wondering whether this gap is too small. Mm -hmm. So this should be higher here. But... So we make that a little higher. Right, and there was there was another little tech return sticky up bit here. All right, I'm going to come back over here. So this slopes down. Another slight exaggeration where. And this piece in here, which is actually quite important for the composition because it's got this beautiful trapezoid, uh, it's not even a trapezoid, is it? Four sided shadow. I'm trying to get everything. I'm not drawing the shadows, I'm just drawing the shapes of the building. That comes out, down, down. I, think I should try and put some of these. I don't want to make this too defined. We're not doing an architectural drawing of the thing. some of these pencil marks when we start painting okay so yeah I'm happy with that let's just finish now on this side trees a little bit of hill actually I drew that in I kind of compressed that bit and we have a little bit more architectural interest down here this comes down. I 
just putting in the main shapes. Now this piece here, this is... Uh, so let me just... So that comes down here. And try not to make this parallel, making this an interest. Making shapes different, so don't make them too regular, too even. I have terrible trouble with trees, making them end up like lollipops. I keep putting extra details in and they end up like lollipops, which is usually not what I'm after. Now, this photo actually is kind of fuzzy, which is for painting can be useful because you can't, you can't see the details, so you can't put them in, but you can see the main value relationships, which is what you want. Now that actually comes down. It's almost like contour drawing. I'm just following the contours. And yeah, nice. Nice set of shapes. Nice set of shapes there. Alright. Uh, do I need to put anything else than that? Hang on. No, no. no. Slightly off. But I'm fine. I would normally, if I was drawing something that was like, I don't know, people say, I would concentrate on the relationships between the shapes a lot more. This is going to be quite forgiving. And it looks castly already, which is fine. Okay, so we have a nice drawing. Let's have a think about colours. Okay, now I'm going to go to a bit of scrap paper. We're going to do some colour matching. And I'll just paste up this photo on the board so we can refer to it. I know you've got the reference picture up in the corner, which is good. And now I have a little bit of practice paper, which I used to have, but now it's disappeared. No, that won't do. About the, oh, this will do. Okay. So let's look at the colour scheme. I think we're going to keep the colour scheme. Um, the greens are nice and muted. It's the sides of the of the walls. They have this sort of pinkish, ochreish, greyish colour to it, and there's quite a lot of variety in there. We're going to have some fun when we do the do do the walls. We're going to put some texture in, do some splattering, etc., etc. And then when we come in and do the darks afterwards, it will really pull it all together. Um, we should do these. These clouds are kind of important, so we should do some colour matching. Let's do sky clouds one of these greens in here i think a foreground green and probably a dark so let's let's start with those uh, right what i usually do i draw a little box and then i use this thing here we are which is very fancy called colour isolator but it's, it's a piece of grey card with a hole it's about a half inch hole cut in the middle and this grey it doesn't have to be grey but I think it's useful to be grey it's kind of it's a neutral grey um, so about halfway between white and black and this helps you when you put it on for this we're putting it actually on the photo let's put it in here it'll stop your brain being confused by everything that's around it and you can really see what that colour is. Uh, for things like skies it's not it's not so important because it's a sky and that's that's all you can see but for other things and things like shadows and things with bright colours um, it's really useful just to isolate things so you can see what the colour actually is. Now we're going to try and mix that colour exactly so um, let's start with what the hue is and by hue I mean the name of the color it's a blue obviously so it's a blue and what kind of blue is kind of it's is it a purpley blue or is it a greenish blue and I think that's pushing towards a greenish blue but not very far 
So I could start with phalo here. I'm really. I could start with phalo. No, let's. Oh, well, no, let's let's start with ultramarine. I mean, ultramarine is kind of a more of a purpley blue. But we can push it towards green. So I have ultramarine on the palette. This is a light value. You can tell it's it's lighter than the grey, so it's obviously lighter. It's in the top half towards white, and it's probably around I don't, an eight value if I get my value chart out. Uh, I can't. I don't have enough hands for this. I can't hold the brush in my mouth either. So actually, that's probably on this scale. And you'll find if you print out value scale values, it's, it's almost a nine actually. So now consistency of paint. This is too thick to be a nine. It needs to be almost transparent on the palette. So that's probably about the right value. And I know that not because of what the color looks like on the palette, but of the consistency of the paint. And I just got it with a little swatch. Okay, and that's probably about the right value. But it's not that color is it and we need to push it towards the green and to do that we just add in a little bit of yellow this has to be probably quite quite subtle i don't think that was subtle enough let's try that that's better but actually i'm just going to pull it back towards the blue with a little bit of ultramarine Actually rather like that and because I've added pigment in I'm just going to add a bit more water to, to bring the value back up and once I'm happy with it I'll do a swatch I think I've lowered the chroma too much it's gone too gray for this photograph however I'm not actually am I too bothered about that I may just put a tad of phthalo blue in just to brighten it slightly yeah okay so I probably should have started with phthalo even though I dislike it that is much closer and one thing I'd just like to point out at this point this may seem like a lot of fussing around with colour and I could have just said, well, it's kind of a light blue, let's use ultramarine, I like ultramarine. This is what we started with. And then we changed it a little. We ended up with this. This to me is garish. The closer we get to what is actually there, the colours get much more subtle and to me much more beautiful. So I find it really worthwhile spending some time getting the colours right. I enjoy it enormously actually. It's one of the most enjoyable bits. And it takes it takes some of the decision making out of when we actually come to do the painting, we've done all the colour mixing already and we should have it in your head. You should be able to remember how you mixed all these things. If you can't remember how you mixed all these things, just put a little note, say ultramarine, tad of lemon yellow, value, whatever it was, what is it, eight or nine, and you should be able to mix them up again. I don't recommend mixing them up and leaving them in the wells. Um, there are usually too many colours to, to do that, and then they'll start evaporating. So the values will change as they lose water. Okay, so sky done sky let's do these clouds now we might be surprised by these clouds they're obviously dark clouds so and let's do this let's do have a guess as to what this color is so let's draw a box now it's blue gray yeah and it's kind of a purpley blue gray so we can probably start with ultramarine for this one now the value of it It's probably darker than a mid value, say, but so a mid value is five. So say a four 
Let's try that. Hmm, I'm not sure. Well, so I was kind of wrong. It's definitely a blue. I thought it was greyer than it was, and it's not. It's just very, quite a rich blue there. The value of it, it is, I think we were pretty close on the value. So this, I said this was going to be a four. Yeah, that's a four, which is quite dark for a sky. I know they are dark clouds, but I don't think we even really think that clouds are that dark. So let's try our cloud mixing. Hmm, so. I'm, I was going to say I'm going to start with ultramarine. I might start with phthalo this time, even though I don't like it. Right, uh, Thalo, come on, how'd you come? Right, now Thalo is incredibly intense, very high chroma, great for mixing because it has it's beautifully bright, so when you mix you tend to make colours less bright. Okay, so it's obviously too bright. And it's just probably too light as well, so I'm going to darken this down and I'm going to add in a little black, a little black. This is lamp black. You don't have to use lamp black. I kind of like it. Well, as actually, I use lamp black because I dislike ivory black. The ivory black I have is a very strange consistency. And so I don't like it. Okay, well, that's better. It's too green, so maybe we should have started with ultramarine. So let's add in some ultramarine to make it slightly more purpley. Let's try that. No, nope, not enough. Oh, well, to rain. Come on. That is getting there. I'm just going to loosen that up a little. The consistency is getting too stiff on the palette. It's not rolling around, so I know it's going to be too dark. Right, I think I learned something there that I should have started with ultramarine. Right, we're gonna go with this one. Just a little more water, just so the consistency is rolling around the around the palette. And when I do my swatches, I try and do them in one rolling brush stroke. No, and don't go back into it. The only thing you can do is if you've got little pools at the bottom, just pick them up with a dry brush. So I'm not quite there, but I'm 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 okay with that. I know the direction I have to go in to mix that blue. Right, okay. Now let's go onto the walls. Now the walls are going to be tricky because there's not they're not a single colour. So we're going to have to pick a, a representative colour and mix that. And I'm just cleaning my palette. I'm just, I'm just using a bit of magic eraser so I can get the phthalo stain out of my palette and it doesn't confuse me with other colours. This is mainly why I don't use phthalo. It does stain something terrible. Right. Okay, can I rest in there? Oh, I can. Walls. Mm. Now I think, I mean, there's this colour here, which is kind of dull, isn't it? It's this pinky colour. Right, so let's have a guess first. We're going to guess our colour. Clouds. Uh, walls. Now, what kind of colour is that? It's kind of a it's beige, basically, isn't it? It's beige. So it's... Let's do the... The value is quite light. Maybe a 7 or an 8. Probably an 8. And it's kind of grey. Beige is a a grey a grey colour. So let's just... 
Yeah, I think we were. We were probably very close with our. And it's a pinkish beige. Now, let's start. I always start when I pick a colour with the pigment that I think is closest on my palette. And I think the closest one is going to be yellow ochre. So let's start with some yellow ochre, right? I'm just going to put some here, a little more water just to loosen it up so it flows. I'm just going to, I, this is absolutely not the colour, but we're going to, we're just going to put a bit down to see how we progress with this. So, all right. Now, this is too bright. See how grey that is? This is too bright. So we're going to actually start by greying this down with a little black. Just a little. I don't want too much because it will... This is the problem with lamp black. You see, that's too much. So you have to coax it out. All right, maybe a little more. Right, so let's try that. Right, so this is just yellow ochre with a little black. Looks kind of dark. And it's gone to green. I'm just going to pull it back with a little red. So I'm pulling it back around the other side of the colour wheel. Maybe a little orange is what we're looking for. That is getting closer. Definitely getting closer, but we're not. We need more red in this. That, I think, with a little, I don't know what we're gonna when we actually paint with it. So anyway, all right, okay. So it's kind of a very pale orange. So I'm gonna take that, and this is what we started with, and then we've moved to here. How bright that is! How bright this is! How bright that is! And it's very tempting just to approximate what you see with what you have on your palette and then you end up with a painting that is incredibly garish and everything all the colors fight with each other yeah I'm actually I'm actually very pleased with that that is that is and you can see this variation in here and we'll be able to do some splattering and dropping in of color and that'll be that's always good fun to do okay so walls In this up a little. Now, ah, now we come to the things that everybody hates. The greens. Ah, nobody likes greens. And one of the reasons nobody likes greens is uh, all the green pigments that you have in your uh, paint collection, almost none of them reflect the greens you see in nature. We think of green as this really bright, you know, you think of green lawns and lots of trees, but when you actually look at them, they're very, very grey and they're very, very yellow. And a lot of the pigments we have in, in our paints, things like Viridian and oh, what's that green I have? I can't remember. It's, it's, they're, very, they're very blue. And foliage and grasses, they're not very blue. Now let's 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 match this one. Oh, let's do some guessing first. Right. So oh, we'll call this grass. I think that's grass, isn't it? It's a green. Okay. But it's a yellow green. It's not a blue green. It's not going towards turquoise at all. It's definitely a yellow green. And the value of it, I think it's probably quite dark. It's probably lower than midway. Probably again a four, like this blue. So let's have a look at it. 
Okay, yeah, now that's a yellow green. You can really see that it's a yellow green. And I'm just going to compare it against the value thing. I know this seems like a lot of. Uh, I don't know. Um, it seems almost mechanical. And I'm just merging. And in some ways it is, but it's 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 training. It's training your eye. So that's actually a three in the on this scale. That's too light. That's too dark. That's just right. I don't know if that's doing the same thing on the screen, but that's definitely what that is. Okay. So a yellow green right now. What I wouldn't do with this is well this is how I would I would pro proceed with a green. I would take yellow. A lemon yellow. So it's a greenish yellow. It's not an orangey yellow. And I'd add in some black. Oop, not too much. I had a bit too much in there. Too much in there, so it's gone rather black. And a bit more yellow. Right, now. See that? That's got a beautiful olive green. It's not quite our green. Not quite our green, but it's close actually. I'm not I'm not futzing around with blues and yellows and adding in a bit of this and a bit of that. Right, I think it's just slightly more yellow. Yeah, and I think I think we're basically there. Now is it the right value? Now for value three, that's probably about right. The consistency of the paint on the palette. Yeah. I'm I'm just eyeballing this. I could move this over here, but I think that is our colour. And we didn't go near a blue. We didn't get our tubes of green out. I have so many tubes of green. And the reason I have so many tubes of green is because I can never find one that actually works for anything. I don't use the... I have um, a little dab of green gold in there. And this other green, I'm not quite sure what it is. Oh, I think that's phthalo green, which has the properties of phthalo. Um, which I just use for demonstration purposes. I always mix my greens. Isn't that a lovely colour? Really nice. I like that very much. Okay, and some people grey down their greens with red, which is which is fine, but there's there's quite a lot of luck involved getting there because because you're putting something in that's very far away on the colour wheel. So you, if you get it slightly wrong, you're going to end up with a completely different colour. So. When you're painting things and you want to drop bits of red in, uh, complement to green, just to put some interest in, that's that's absolutely fine. But if you're mixing up a colour, trying to put red in to neutralise neutralize something is uh, it's a bit hit and miss. Okay, so that's that grass. Right, now this foreground colour. Now foreground colours always fool me. Uh, let's have a look. Now we do our guess and check again. So let's and let's let's pick this sort of this this color here. Now it's a yellow. We think it's a greenish yellow, but it's a very grey greenish yellow. It's fairly light, maybe a seven. So a grey greenish yellow. Now I just put this on to see whether. Yeah. Okay, that probably is All right. And it's lighter because it's lighter than the. Gray. What value did I say that was? No, it's not that one. Uh, yeah, it's between, between the seven and eight. It's very light, actually. Bits of this are probably a lot darker. I mean, these bits are obviously darker. Over here, that's kind of dark. We're not going to put this detail in the foreground, by the way. Um, I feel if we put all this detail in the foreground, it's going to fight with the main, the main subject. So this is going to be very broadly done with a little bit of texture in, but not so much that it's going to detract from what we have up there. So the yellow, very light grey, greenish yellow. Now it could be it's just a lighter version of this. So let's start with our yellow. 
got a little bit of black in there, which is fine. This is lemon yellow. And then I add in my bit of black. Not as much as we did before. Oh no, this isn't actually. I think right. I'm gonna I'm trying to grey it down so it's not bright, but let's try that. So this is lemon yellow. Right, now once this is down, right, it's too bright for a start. I can now see that. Slightly too dark. So I'm gonna grey it down a little more with a bit more black. Okay, but it's still green. Right, so we want to put it round towards the orange. I'm tempted, I don't know if this is going to work, I'm tempted to put in a bit of burnt sienna because it will pull us round towards the orange. The brown is a dark orange. And it'll grey it for us as well. I don't want to put in too much. Burnt Sierra is another one I, I seem to... Right, I seem to overdo. Right. Nope. Now, more water. I put more pigment in so it's going to take the value down. So I put in more water to bring the value back up again. Now that is better. Now that I think is probably what we're looking at. And that, this looks very kind of bright yellow. You'd be tempted if you just looked, wow, we've got bright yellow grass, let's get the yellow out, slap, slap, slap. And then you end up with ridiculously bright grass and you get to the end of your painting and you think, well, why didn't that work? What's wrong? Okay, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm actually going to get the checker out. Uh, put that on there, and then I put this on there. Yeah, I mean it might be slightly too light, uh, slightly too, too bright, even, even there. So let's put that down. So that's going to be our light grass colour, which doesn't look particularly grassy. Or indeed particularly light. There we go. But it's definitely now now I've got it down. Yep. It's right. Now one last thing before we actually start slapping some paint on the paper. <laughs> um once I've done these swatches. Actually it's one more swatch. Let me let me let me uh before we make that decision. We don't really need to do this, but we will. These darks, we could do a dark green, but I don't think we will. It's basically going to be this one, but with more black in it. These shadows, what colour are we going to make these shadows? Now on this photo, they're very, very dark. Um, we're probably not going to push them quite as dark might look a little stark and we're not going to do them black so we're going to mix up a grey i think and my favorite mixture for grey is ultramarine Put a bit more in there and burnt sienna and that if you put them in in the right amounts should give you a pretty neutral grey and then if you want to shift that, if you want to shift it slightly to a blue-grey, you just add in a bit more ultramarine. Or if you want to shift it to a slightly warmer brown, brownish-grey, you put in a bit more burnt sienna. And I'm just going to, that's pretty neutral. I'm just going to do a neutral. Now that is probably, it looks maybe a little light. I think that will be okay. Uh, 
Uh, slightly bluer one. Yeah, that's, that's kind of nice. And then a slightly browner one. Right, I'm putting more pigment in, so just a little more water. A bit more blue, that's a bit too brown. That's basically brown, that's not grey. And then a browner one. So they're the colours we're going to use. Now, what I usually do at this point is I look at the colours we've mixed up and I think, do they look nice here? Do they make a good painting here? Mm. And... A lot of the times they do, but for this one, it kind of looks a bit meh. There's, there's not a lot of interest there. And the reason I think is because the colour interest is all in the slight variations of colour in the in the castle walls. So it's this colour. So I'm just I just want to put on this page just a swatch where we do a little bit, no, that's not going to work. A little bit of dropping in colour. I'm just going to put, that's not right, it was pinker, wasn't it? Let's, let's have this one. I just want to see if that kind of perks up the whole collection. I didn't work very hard to mix that colour. I should have worked harder. So I'm just going to get some yellow ochre on my brush. And just see whether maybe a bit of splattering. Maybe a bit of pink. Pinkish orange maybe let's try that and I'm just yeah it needs probably just a little there's my spray bottle yeah and not too pink as well this is actually quite quite orangey in there I'll do this more carefully when we've actually got the colour on the paper but yeah that's a bit better just need some accents of, of orangey orangey red I think and then I'll just make this colour scheme sing oops okay pause <laughs> <laughs> 